This video, much like my last one, will not be a publication review, but rather what I have learned in reading about psychedelic research these past few years of my life. This talk will be titled Ligand Receptor Interaction, in which we'll look at how do drugs like LSD bind to receptors inside of your brain. This first photo I find quite funny. If you're not familiar with the history of LSD, Albert Hoffman ingested 250 micrograms of the drug on the first ever LSD trip and rode his bicycle home from work that day. And in this photo, we see a bicycle inside of a receptor. Let's start with the basics. Drugs in chemistry and pharmacology are often referred to as ligands. You can use these words interchangeably. These drugs we said were things like LSD, psilocybin, DMT, you name your favorite psychedelic drug or drug in general. From the last video, think about the fact that when you look at these drugs, a lot of them have single bonds, especially psilocybin and DMT. We talked about last time how these single bonds have the availability to rotate in three-dimensional space. And thus we can figure out which three-dimensional orientation in space will give us the lowest energy conformer. So try to think about these things as three-dimensional not just flat and pointer as we see them on a piece of paper, as I talked about in the last video to a great extent. A receptor is a protein located on a cell's plasma membrane. So a protein is a sequence of amino acids. Let's look a little bit deeper at this. Here's a picture of a cell. And on that cell, we have a receptor. Specifically on this cell, this blue one, yellow one, those two green ones, and the red one are also all receptors. I have just decided to focus on this receptor. Other parts of the cell are the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane of the cell acts as a barrier to keep the inside of the cell separate from the outside of the cell. So it's a much more controlled environment on the inside of the cell than it is the outside of a cell. We have, as we just talked about, the inside of the cell or the intracellular space, and we also have the extracellular space of a cell. And ligands or drugs interact with receptors to change how cells talk to each other. If we're talking specifically about psychedelics, which we are, we know that these will cause changes in perception, how we interpret the world. So these are drastic effects in terms of psychedelics when they bind to receptors. We can think about this as a key and a lock. Think about the ligand or the drug as a key and the receptor as a lock. And in order for that receptor to be unlocked or turned on, the shape of the key or drug has to fit it correctly. Let's take a deeper dive in looking at one of these receptors. Let's look at the serotonin 2B receptor. The reason I'm choosing this specific receptor is because in an earlier video, I talked about the crystal structure of LSD bound to a serotonin receptor, and this was the receptor that they bound LSD to in that paper. If you haven't watched that video, give it a watch. We said that we can divide receptors into three different parts. An extracellular space, which sits outside of the cell a plasma membrane, which sits on the plasma membrane separating the outside and the inside of a cell, and the intracellular space, which sits on the inside part of the cell. Now, these receptors are classified as G protein coupled receptors, or GPCRs, and the reason for that is that they have seven transmembrane helices, which are color coded, and they all cross the plasma membrane, which is what constitutes a GPCR. Now on this receptor, there's also something called an orthosteric site. This is the site that the drugs bind to, or in our case, drugs like LSD, ergotamine, and serotonin. It's interesting to think about because they're all binding to the same site but they all have different three-dimensional conformations in space and thus will push and pull on different parts of the receptor. Because after all, when a drug binds to a receptor, the drug changes shapes a little bit as well as the receptor.
Now, the story isn't just super simple because drugs, especially psychedelic drugs, do not just bind to one specific receptor. They bind to many different receptors and different receptor subtypes. Phenethylamine specifically. These are drugs like MDMA and MDA, basically ecstasy derivatives. These bind to the serotonin 2A and 2C receptor. I do want to point out that 5-HT does mean serotonin. So just notice that there's a 2A and a 2C. This means that there are subtypes of different serotonin receptors or receptors that are closely related to serotonin receptor. Then we have the tryptamines. These are drugs like psilocybin and DMT. Notice how these also bind to the serotonin 2A and 2C receptor. But what differentiates the tryptamines from the phenethylamines is that the tryptamines also bind to the serotonin 1A receptor, which can be used to distinguish the two. But we actually don't know a lot about the function of the serotonin 1A receptor. However, we do know that the serotonin 2A receptor does mimic psychedelic effects and it is responsible for those effects inside of these drugs. LSD, however, binds to many different receptors. We can see much like the tryptamines, LSD shares the 2A, the 2C, and the 1A receptor. We should also note that it binds to more subtypes of serotonin receptors, including the 1B, the 1D, the 5A, and the 6, and the 7. Now D stands for dopamine, so there's also binding to the dopamine 1, dopamine 2, dopamine 3 receptor, and the last receptor that it binds to is the alpha-2 receptor. Now this is an adrenergic receptor. However, I don't know a lot about this receptor, so I won't speak to its pharmacology. Let's now look at how you might actually dock a drug to a receptor or how it might bind. You can use a program like AutodocVena to do this for you. In the program, you have to tell it what drug you want to use, what receptor you want to use, and then because we know where the orthosteric binding site is, we can tell the program approximately where we think our drug might bind. And that is done by using this dialog box. When you run the computation, you get a result that looks something like this. As we can see, the active site of the receptor is occupied by our drug now, or the orthosteric site. You might be a bit confused as you see two drugs overlaying one another. You see a drug in gray in one conformation of the receptor and a drug in yellow in the another conformation in the receptor. These two different conformations will have different stabilities associated with them. In the next slide, we'll look at which one is better and which one is worse and why. And finally, we get to what LSD looks like when it is docked to serotonin 2B receptor. You might be wondering why I use serotonin 2B receptor. In a previous literature review, I talked about a publication in which the authors took LSD and bound it to serotonin 2B receptor because they got a crystal structure out of this. So I wanted to confirm their findings with my findings. What we see is in gray. Gray is the drug LSD and the stuff outside of that gray structure is the receptor. We also see this pop-up window on the right. I want to point out this score value. This score value refers to how stable that drug is in that conformation interacting with the receptor. With the idea being that the more negative this value is, the more stable that conformation is in the receptor. You should notice that right below it, there's another score value that is negative 9.2. Because negative 9.2 is more positive than negative 9.6, this conformation is not as stable. We'll also see listed next to this a hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are crucial in drug receptor interaction as it, this is a stabilizing force upon the two things interacting with each other. So thus in this structure, we should see two hydrogen bonds. The hydrogen bonds are lined in black, if you'll notice. This first hydrogen bond is a secondary amine. This secondary amine is having a hydrogen bond to glycine 221 on the fifth helix of the receptor.
The other hydrogen bond is right here, in which the tertiary amine is hydrogen bound to aspartic acid 135 of the third helix. I know this video was a little bit in-depth and complicated and went into the nitty-gritty of how drugs bind to receptors, but there are a few takeaway or key ideas I hope you learned from this. When drugs bind receptors, both the drug changes its three-dimensional shape as well as the receptor. These unique three-dimensional changes are what cause a drug to have effects. For a later video, this changes what's called cellular signaling pathways. Till then, hope you enjoyed.